do I even start this video off? I'm not even sure. <laughs> it's one of those days that's like a total mind blower and highly anticipated for myself. And hopefully it'll help the channel out. And uh, let me just start this one off by saying thanks Joe from Feel Free. Dude, really? Wow. feeling I will. What's your channel? <laughs> what's your channel's name? Uh, Amber Dog Productions. Cool. Uh, Amber what? Amber Dog. Amber Dog Productions. Productions. All right, yeah. I'll My dog's sure. name is Amber, so it had to, I had to come up with a name somewhere. And... <laughs> yeah, I'll subscribe, man. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Enjoy okay. it. I want to actually watch you open that, too. So. <laughs> For those of you who haven't uh, got a kayak from these guys, um, it's that's not paper. It's some kind of like almost fabric stuff. It's, it's really thick and padded. So, I mean, you know, we hear about them doing really good packing jobs and stuff. And I don't even know what this fabric stuff is, but it's uh, pretty neat. You can't say that they uh, don't pack these things well. I'm here to tell you. You know, I gotta be careful too, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna risk slashing the kayak and putting a big gouge in it or something. There's there's plenty of time for me to do that later on the lake. Now watch watch, Joe pulls a prank on me and sends me a pink one or something like that. <laughs> I could see him doing that. Joe's a really cool guy. If you guys have not met him or had the opportunity to talk to Joe from Feel Free, um, I would say his last name, but more than likely I'd slaughter it. Um, I kept wanting to ask him, but felt embarrassed to, given everything that was going on. I, I already, I was just so stunned by everything that was happening and what he was offering me. So, for for anybody that doesn't know, uh, which is probably pretty much everybody, <laughs> um, Joe. Oh man, I'm gonna try it. Mongo, but Joe, don't don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. Um, Joe reached out to me, and flat out, I'm not making this up. I, I'm not making this up. Joe reached out to me. <laughs> And he knows that I use a 105, Big Fish 105, for uh, my filming my my videos on my lakes where I can get it into. It's the best filming craft that I can possibly imagine. These are just out of reach. And uh, I guess Joe really liked what he saw on my channel. Um, he told me it was unique. Um, different way of using their kayaks and I think that had a lot to do with why he made an unbelievable generous offer to send me this. Now my videos in the future on this um, bear in mind he told me and I'm gonna tell you straight out Joe told me you don't have to mention our name you don't have to even show the kayak you don't have to do nothing no strings no nothing I just want you to have this kayak to help you better do what it is you do. And that was it. That was literally it. So here it is. Three Waters Big Fish 103 pedal drive. 
The pedal unit is en route for delivery right now. Uh, it's shipped out separately from the kayak itself. Um, Joe hooked me up, uh, full ride, and I just, guys, I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Anyway, I'll just shut up now. Thank you, Joe. Again, I, I probably told him that so many times in our emails, in our emails and stuff. He's probably sick of me saying it, but how can you, how can you say it so many times? I don't think you can. I think my hopes of being able to save this fabric from the windling, because it's going to take, it's going to take an act of, an act of God to be able to get all this stuff off this fabric. But man, it's so cushiony. Really. <laughs> I can hear the comments now. People saying you're you're probably the guy that uh, carefully takes and unwraps his Christmas presents and folds the paper when he's done. Now, I'm not going to lie, I have done that once or twice on some really fancy gift wrap, but uh, that's not the case this time, I assure you. This thing is just packed that well. Okay, here's a neat little detail. So, it looks like on each end they kind of tie this in a big old knot, and uh, they tie this in a big old knot like that, and they tuck, this, they tuck it underneath the bottom of the keel, so it has some padding and shipment. You know, a lot of people are probably going to be like, yeah, so, but when they're trucking around, bouncing around, that means this is taking a hit in that kayak. That's cool attention detail because they could have easy, would have been easier for them to do it that way, and they did not. So I'd like to point that out in a big cat tip. But let's see if I can move this over a little bit and get the padding off. bag open here. Well, you certainly can't accuse them of not adequately wrapping this thing up. <laughs> this is a lot like... Uh, one of those little Russian dolls or an onion. But I'll tell you what, I'm grateful they did it. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Plug on the side, sweet. Oh, that's nice. My 105 has a drain plug on the top. So you gotta roll the whole thing over and upside down to be able to drain it. How's it going? Are you unboxing a kayak? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, I saw you I saw the kayak and I'm like, hey! <laughs> yeah, uh, it just it just got here today, obviously. Um, free Waters, feel free, the company makes us. Yeah, yeah. They saw my YouTube channel and they said we want you. I'm already in one of their kayaks. Oh, okay. A smaller one. Yeah, yeah. And uh and they said, how about a better kayak? <laughs> so, so they sent me this one with the pedal drive unit and all that. Right on. And uh, sent me a bunch of goodies. Yeah. And they're like, we love what you're doing. You're using our craft in a way that no one else is. Yeah. So, oh, really? What are you doing with them? I, I do a lot of uh, uh, video and film work uh, in the air, on the land, on the water, and underwater. Oh, one of my prior videos, I have the 360 swivel seat now with the lumbar sport, and that will be going in this. There is the transducer mount, which I'll probably be taking that out. And um, thinking about running a camera on that. I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna think about that. There's so many, so many things that I'm just not sure what I'm gonna do. Logos are good. Feels good. Love the color. It's gonna look good with my truck. Wow. So let's check this thing out a little bit here. Move the camera over here a little bit. Now I know that if you've done your 
you've done your homework, then you already know a lot of this stuff. So this hatch right here, let's see what's under there. Wow, that's a nice little rubbery thing to pull up and kind of pull apart. Okay, got a little bit of storage there. Anyway, so you got a nice little trunk right here. Little little tip for you, um, this hole right here where this goes through, uh, when you're hitting some uh, high water and stuff, water will splash up through there and it can settle in here. Carry a sponge with you, it's easy. Or just put some foam in there and seal that thing up as best you can. Okay. So the pedal drive will be here today. And uh, I'll uh, burn in part of that as it, as, it gets, as it gets here. I will edit that in. Or do it. So anyway, in here you got your pedal drive unit sits in here. That's the roller bar that it pivots on. This, this is what locks it into position. And luckily, it's got two screws in it, and they are that plate is adjustable to get exactly the right fit. Um, I'm working on that. I think there's, I may, but I I think there's a better way to do that. It's quicker. It'd be nice to be able to flip down a lever to to uh, more quickly raise and lower that. You know what they say. Perfection is not impossible. It just takes a little longer. Moving on back to the seat. This is the seat that comes with it, as we've already shown. And it looks to me, looks to me like if I loosen the strap up a little more, just under it all the way, looks like you can go all the way back. That's locked right there. And uh, dang, man, that's a lot of leg room. I'm assuming the pedals are about here. We'll find out here in a bit. And uh, I have no idea what this is. Oh, that might be, it's, it's anchored in the back. That might be the, uh, so if you stand the seat up, okay, so if you want to stand the seat up, You have to unleash this, pull that out. You can stand it up there, or just move it all the way back and out of your way. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. And then you have an unbelievable floor plan. We'll call it a floor plan. Yeah, these are the straps are gonna hold the, the seat. So if you wanna stand the seat up, you anchor these on, you can actually lean back on the seat if you would choose to, so. And uh, so let's get that seat bag down because I know there's something else on it here. Okay, so go to lower position like that or higher. Yep, low and high. Okay, just keep moving it on back, whatever your you know, seat position is now. Because you don't have foot rest, you rely. Basically, because the pedal drive, you don't need really footrest for that. I don't see any, any uh, I don't see a spot for a paddle. However, I do have some paddle locks and uh, I'll probably put some, I always want to carry a paddle because, you know, if your drive fails, your um, trolling motor, whatever if it fails, you always have a backup. That's just common sense, okay? Anyway, so yeah, I'm going to be sealing all the holes up and stuff like that. Definitely, I want to do that. Got some bungee cords and holders. And we have our manufacturer certificate of origin with the barcode. Big Fish 103 Pro Fish. Wave camouflage. So this is what you need if you're going to motorize your craft. You have to have this in many states. Not all, but in many states you need to have this. Big fish 108, 103, okay. It says, uh, never use or drink soda pop, always drink beer, I'm kidding. Okay, okay you got the uh, internal rod tip protectors. Those are huge, my gosh, man. Those are a lot bigger than my 105. I, you know what, damn, that looks like you could stuff a soda can in there. Let's see. So I, I'm sure this is a selling point. 
Can you stick a soda can? Yes, you can. Extra storage for your soda can. <laughs> okay, so there's something about uh, feel free big fish uh, tracks right here. Boy, these are beefier like than my 105. These are seriously beefier. Huh. Anyway, uh, so I'm discovering this with you. <laughs> so on, on the tracks, okay, they, they've got a proprietary system, okay? And so the way that works, let me get one ready for you here. So the way that works is you have in the center, you see this silver piece right here, okay? Make sure that's in there, okay? That, so that silver piece in the middle, that's yak gear, yak attack, all that kind of stuff. And that piece that's on top of it, that acts on top of it, that's an adapter, okay? And it just, you just take your original stud, your original mount, and you slip, you slip the adapter right on top of it, and then there's a little O-ring that comes with them, and you slip that on there. And then you have this unit. Anyway, so then, you don't have to take the end caps off. There we go. Okay, it's lining up, the adapter's lining up just perfect right up underneath here, I can see. So what these are, these are an ore lock. I like this kind, the roll locks. Um, there's Yak Hacker and Yak Attack, they both make these so your paddle goes in here and kind of locks down with these wheels and then pops out. They hold really well, they got a rubber pad underneath there, keep them slipping around. They work really good. So I'll probably be running these on here. Now look, something I need to do you know, and I need to point this out and make this clear. Um, they sent me this kayak. Uh, feel free, Joe. Sent me this kayak so I can continue to do what I'm doing. No strings attached, as I said. The reality is that as I do re uh, reviewing and showcasing things that I do and whatever I end up doing to this kayak, mods, upgrades, problems, pros and cons, um, I'd like to point out that I'm not a three waters feel free fanboy in the sense that they sent me this and now I'm a spokesperson for them, okay? And the reason I say that is because I'm already on one of their craft. I have their uh, 105 and my best film work underwater and stuff has been on that craft. So there's a good reason why I don't mind talking about this craft. Yes, it's a different kayak altogether, most certainly, obviously, <laughs> but I'm not a fanboy of really anything. I go with what I feel is suits my needs the best. It may not be the best thing on the planet. Like everyone's, you know, might say that a Hobie makes the best kayaks. Well, maybe they do, but not for me, not for my needs. Okay. Um, I would take my 105 without a rudder any day over a, over a Hobie. Um, and I, I do know that there is like it's the Outback or something like that that might work, but at the end of the day, you have to pick the products and things that suit you best. Does that make me a fanboy of Three Waters? It just simply means I like what they offer. And uh, in this case, I can't wait to get this thing on the water because my Three Waters Big Fish 105 performs so well, I can't even imagine what this is going to be like. And then you add in the pedal drive, which I have hopes is going to enable me to lose a lot less footage. Uh, my techniques I have to do for filming are quite a bit different on that than I suspect they may be on this. But we'll see. And uh, I'm going to have it on film. <laughs> anyway, so. Yeah, am I a fanboy? I don't think I'm a fanboy. I just love their product. It suits my needs. Uh, and their, their quality is fantastic for my 105. I don't even know how many times I've been out. And it's been bulletproof. Sealed up the holes, you know, the screw holes, put marine silicone on them, do some check things out. Do the basics, man. You do that on any kayak you buy. And uh, I will be doing it on this one as well. I don't need any unexpected surprises due to my desire to get out there real quick and, and or just be lazy so anyway nice shirt awesome kayak 
let's move on to the next thing. Okay, as I continue on with the assembly of the Three Waters Big Fish 103 pedal drive, uh, one of the things that I've read a lot on some of these forums, because I have a 105, so I follow the forums and stuff like that and help each other out, is that the 103 and the 108 suffer from the bottom edge of the beaver tail being lower than the kayak, is what they say. Now, I don't know if they changed something or whatever, but check this out. So, let me line you up here at the bottom of this, and I'm going to take a board, put it on the bottom of the kayak. Boy, that lighting sucks. Let me try it the other way. better so if I take a board and I put it on the bottom of the kayak you see it's not so I don't know if they've changed something or what now obviously when you pick up the kayak you know the ground level is gonna do it so let's try that because right now the kayak is sitting on a on a crate up front so let's see what we get here okay that's an uncomfortable height for me to carry it that right there is the height to carry it. If I set the front down, obviously it's gonna do it. So, when all else fails, let's go to the extreme test. Let's take it off the cart and see. I mean, these are, these are the things we all wanna know because I see this concern come up all the time. Oh, I didn't, I didn't lift it up high enough. <laughs> Okay, move the camera over here. You can see right here, here's that board. Okay, there it is right there. It's, it's, it's almost touching the rudder. I am on carpet too, so the kayak's gonna sink deeper. So you actually have a little more room than that. Okay, so at least if this thing's sitting in the water, the kayak is gonna hit first. So maybe they've changed it, or maybe people weren't installing the rudder correctly. I don't know, but either way, it's clearly not a problem here. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the rudder install. Now, what I did on my 105 that I think has kind of helped it out a little bit, we'll also be doing on that one, or on this one. I just found a rubber washer, not too thick, um, one that'll fit and take up there's a, even every when you get it adjusted right and everything is still at up and down slop okay um it doesn't hurt anything you don't have to do it uh, but i'm also a car guy and uh so i kind of like a little bit of a uh, post tolerances i guess and i know that you know you got to be careful of this thing right here you want to make sure you're not smacking this thing around so anyway we're going to insert this rubber washer in there and then we're also going to use uh, Loctite. So right on the top here, right on the top is your screw that is located right here. Okay, right, it's located right there. Okay, and that goes to the pin, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna back out that. Let me back the camera off a little bit here. Okay, so you're gonna back that screw out a little bit. You wanna take that screw out, actually. Now, it'll stay in this pocket up here where it's at. Um, it, won't, uh, it won't just fall out that I know of. No, it's, it's not falling out. Uh, okay, then you take your two, then you take these two pins out right here and these two, this thin and this thick washer. The thin one does go on the bottom. As an FYI, I don't know that it matters too much, but uh, I know that according to the installation stuff that I've seen, that's the way it's supposed to go. Um, also, <clears throat> you put the thicker one on top, and then this rubber washer that uh, I was talking about. What I'm going to do with that is I'm going to put the thin one right here first. And then I'm going to take that rubber one that I put on here. And it's kind of a tight fit. But it ends up working out fine. 
Okay, I'm gonna back that down a little bit so it's sticking out. Yeah, about like that. You know, no big deal. But it's also holding the pin in place, which is kind of nice. Okay, now I'm gonna put a little bit of thread lock. I would recommend using blue Loctite 243. Okay, use blue Loctite. This is not a good application for red. And I mean, you could use red, I guess, but if you ever wanted to take this thing off to fix it or do maintenance or whatever like that, you're in a real world of hurt when you do that with the red. Because red, the way you get red Loctite to let go is you have to heat it, okay? That's plastic here, let's not do that. Okay, now I'm gonna take the, take the rudder and I'm going to run that pin up into the hole until it just breaches the top. And that's when I'm putting my thick washer on after I drop it. Okay, now I'm gonna run that pin up a little bit, put my screwdriver in the screw head up here. Line that up and then let it down just a little bit. So I can start picking up that pin. I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit. I don't want to cinch it down yet. Because what I want to do now, move this over here. Make sure you can see this. Okay, so what I'm, I've got the thick washer right up under here. See it right there. I got the thin one uh, right under here with my rubber one here. And so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to lift these up, cinch these up, and place the pins correctly. Get a better camera angle there. Now what I want to do is I want to raise these, the rubber one that I put on here, I'm going to raise it up and the plastic one, okay? Then you got your two cotter pins. I want to rotate that so the holes in the main shaft are in alignment. Makes it easy for me to get to. However, not as easy for me to see. <laughs> okay, so I put one underneath, so I've got the shim that I'm putting in, the thin plastic washer, and one key cotter pin, okay? And then, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tighten this up, snug it up some, and you kind of have to hold this, you have to kind of hold that center shaft a little bit. Okay, now, now you can see possibly right here that lower hole is now in alignment now that I've done that in that order. Okay, and then I show the cotter pin through that. And there it is. Now I want to double check. You hold the cotter pin to kind of help you get a handle on it. You've got Loctite on there. Give it a little bit of a snug. Don't go reefing on it. Just to snug it up. He's got Loctite. No sense of breaking. Look at that. Butter smooth and no up and down slot. That is perfect, okay? I mean, look at that. Okay, sweet. That is sweetness, okay? Now move on to the next step, and that is attaching the cables. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the cables that go to the beaver tail, and you'll need a 3 8 and a 5 16 wrench and the 3 8 goes on the main head part and your 5 16 goes 
on the other end. Now these are nylocks on here. If you don't know what a nylock is, if you look at the inside of that nut right there, there's a little nylon insert right in there, and that keeps it from backing out. Nice that they put those on there. Thanks, guys. And I choose to run mine on the outside. Um, if you, so the way this works is if you put it to the inside and you adjust your cables and stuff, if you, if you put it to the inside and you're not getting enough throw, then you can move it to the outside and that will give you more throw, okay? So you want to be able to go, you know, full, full length, okay? And I don't see how that's going to make a huge difference on this particular t type of system, but that's what, that's what these holes are for. And that's how you go. Now, we'll put this on the top so it's in the more of a straight line with the, uh, with the cable going in. You don't want to come up from the bottom at an angle. There's no need for that. And then you take your washer and your nut, put the washer on from underneath. Make sure your nylon nut goes on the right direction so that the domed part faces away from everything else. So in this case, it's coming up from the bottom, so it will be like this. Okay, if you try to put it on the other way, yeah, it'll work if you can ever get it started. Good luck on that. Give me a call if you, if you manage to. So, we do the same thing over here. We take off the nylock and our washer. See which way it naturally wants to lay. It wants to go that way with the twist of the cable. And we put the washer on, grab our nylock nut, get that started. Okay, now we're going to tighten these down a little bit. Now, let's see if these are locked or if they're stepped. If they're stepped, or we're going to find out. Okay, so those are locked. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to line your rudder straight. This is where having a couple of wrenches is going to be really handy for this. Okay. Have your rudder straight and then align your cable so it's straight in. Okay. Because this is a neutral point is what we're after. And then snug that down. Okay. At a neutral point. Neutral being this is centered and neutral. This is centered and neutral. We're going to do the same thing over here. Now, precision is not, you don't have to get out a straight edge and all that kind of stuff. Okay, don't get all crazy. Okay, now we're going to go up front and we're going to pull that. All right. And here we go. So just to kind of check it out, we'll get into adjusting the the uh, pull, the rudder lift cable in a minute. So I want to, it's a little bit of slop there, so we'll need to adjust that. And the way you adjust that is you loosen these set screws evenly. Make sure your rudder control lever is in the neutral position. This is in the neutral position. You'll loosen these two. Don't yank on them, you know, just get them pulled so there's tension on it. A little bit of tension and cinch these back down. I would also recommend a little bit of Loctite in those two. So we'll come back to that. Okay, now we're going to take an Allen wrench. And I know someone's going to ask what size this is. I, th I suspect these are metric. And, um, you know, hey, I'm old school. <laughs> I don't do the metric system. So, But I have a complete drawer just stuffed full of Allen wrenches I've collected over the last 50 years. So whatever. I'm going to loosen that up a little bit, and I'm going to loosen this one over here up a little bit. Okay. Get that tension. This, these, these set screws crimp down on the cable, okay? So what I want to do is I want to get those loose so the cable is free, okay? Get those nice and up off of there. Okay, now I want to rotate this a little bit. Okay. 
And what I'm looking for is a neutral position of the rudder, okay? I wanna check my neutral up here at the eight ball again. And it looks good, it did not move. That's good. Also, a little note, you'll find some of these little trim pieces when they ship it, they're, they're stuck on here. Do remove those. Uh, they're just, just to keep everything getting pulled in and yanked around stuff. So, okay, so I have them in a neutral position. I want to start with one side, put a little bit of tension on it. Let me give it a little bit of a pull here. Okay, I want to just snug that down just a little bit. I don't want to deform the cable a whole lot. And then I'm going to do the same thing here because this is the posing on, that, on the eight ball um, rudder control. I keep calling it a shifter. <laughs> Our guy. Uh, anyway, you want to put enough tension on that because both of these cables go around a round disc. And so one comes up the back, one comes over the top. So you want a little bit of not hardcore. You don't want to be yanking on it because there's a uh, ring and pinion gear system inside that uh, steering control unit. So you don't want to be, you know, putting too much undue pressure on that. But just make sure you, okay, it's got a little bit of tension on it. It's good. And now what I want to do is I want to take an Allen wrench that fits it and check my center and that's good. Snug those down a little bit, okay? And it makes sense. You'll notice one of these is longer than the other and that makes sense because one of these has to go around the bottom and over to the top and the other one just goes from the top right out, okay? So that's looking, that's looking good to me. I'm liking that. So again, we're at neutral here. We're at neutral up here and Look at that. So we actuate it a little bit, nice and easy. I see a little bit of, a little bit of play. Now I want to go back to neutral here at the rudder control. Good to go at neutral. Now I want to come back here and I want to check this. That still feels pretty good. Okay, that feels pretty good. All right. So I think we're on a roll here. Now remember, the cable, just like back when you were a kid, cable does stretch over time, so you may need to, at some point, you may need to adjust these a little bit, okay? As things get seated and, uh, you know, you may need to adjust them slightly, and that's, that's normal. Remember your old gear shifters cables and brake cables on your bicycles? They stretch over time. That's completely normal, okay? So just know how to do it. Neutral your uh, steering control up there, neutral this, and get your cables. I'll wrap it around like, kind of like you see here. And in this case, I just ran it through down through that second hole. Same thing over here. Uh, no big deal. So I think that's what I'm going to run with on this. If it drives me, in, me nuts later, which I doubt it, um, it doesn't hurt anything either way. It's perfectly fine like that. Uh, then I may trim it later if I find my little aluminum end cable end caps. But for now, that's good enough. I'm gonna take just a little bit of Loctite. Now watch me dump a bunch on it. Again, this is blue Loctite. And then you put it back in like that. Nice and easy. All right, so we're gonna pull this one up. And we're gonna put a little bit of Loctite on that. One step I don't see anybody talking about is doing the Loctite. I don't know why that is, because uh, a lot of the, a lot of times you'll see this, you know, people uh, in some of the forums are having problems and stuff, and a lot of the problems are legit, you know, that people have, but you run across a lot of times that are like pretty basic stuff, you know, but hey, if you don't know, you don't know, and that's okay. That's why we watch videos, you know, we watch these videos to learn. So hopefully, I'm not saying I'm doing everything right either, you know, but uh, I just kind of what, what goes right and what feels right, and I think we're good. Okay, Loctite it, good to go. We put Loctite on this screw, that's good to go. All right, now we're gonna move on to this, okay? This is the one that actuates and raises and lowers the beaver tail rudder, okay? So we'll move on to that next. Okay, I want to make a little addendum here. Um, everything I had as neutral, as it turns out, the way that gear mechanism is up there with that spool, I'm suspecting is where the difference is. Um, 
what I ended up having to do is I noticed that when I grabbed the steering, okay, at, at a 90 degree, 90 degree like we were discussing, when I went one way versus the other way, what I wasn't getting was the, was the same deflection on the rudder each way. So you'll notice at the 90 degree here, the rudder was off. So I had this centered and that at 90 degrees. And what that caused down here is it caused the rudder to not be able to go a full throw each direction. So the way I got around that is I centered the rudder. Okay, centered the rudder like this. And then what I did is I loosened these two set screws that we did earlier, okay? I loosened these two. The Loctite had not set yet. And I came over here and I raised this up. I figured out which way I needed to go. And so this needs to be raised at a little bit of an angle, okay? So you need that at a little bit of an angle. So you have full throw each direction and then you find center as you're going, okay? So, and then I came back here and checked it. And the way I kind of eyeballed it, I'll show you here. The way I eyeballed it, you see this, see this slot right here? My camera quit freaking out. This slot at full deflection each way came over and pointed at this hole and deflection the other way. This slot right here pointed at this hole. And so what I did is I just adjusted until each deflection angle, it was pointed at each, this slot was pointed at each of those holes. And that'll get you plenty close enough. Okay, so this is the cord that you pull with a little ball on it that's up here by your seat. And this is the cord you pull to raise and lower your uh, rudder. This cleat right here, when you pull it towards you like this, okay, it unlocks from these little teeth that grab the string when there's tension on it. It grabs the string in a one-way direction, okay? And that locks it into place. And then you pull it forward a little bit. Remember to do this, okay? You want your cord to last a long time. Um, pull it when you get ready to release it. Pull it forward a little bit and then up, okay? That pulls it off the lock of those little teeth that are in there. Pull it forward a little bit, move it out, lower it down nice and easy. So the question here is how do we get this adjusted correctly? All right, well obviously, you don't have to do it at all if you like a nine foot long cord. I don't. In the down position, all the cord that it needs, that it needs to, you know, go to be deployed is already out right now because because it's down. Now what I want to do is I want to take a guess here and I want to take this and there is a plastic plug in there. So if that comes out like that, okay, don't lose that. It's not the end of the world if you just tie it big or not. Don't panic. So what I want to do is I want it to hang down so that it's just about touching the floor, but easy to grab, okay? So I think I'm going to go about here, and what we're going to do is we're going to try a temporary knot. And now, now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this, and the rudder should come up. And it does. And then you push it in and let go. And it's good. Now, of course, there's nothing you can do about that. Now, I will be putting some padding in here like I did on my 105, um, just because I like it for grip, and quiets everything down. So now we're going to release it and see how that goes. We want to pull it for a little bit, pull it up out of those teeth, lower it down. I guide it down. I don't just let it drop and hit. Okay. And there it is. We're good to go. I think, I think that's a good spot. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tie me another knot in that location. There's that, okay. And I'm going to cut off the tag end. Good to go. And then I think I'll probably, it feels like nylon. Because it's nylon, I'm gonna melt the end so it doesn't start fraying on me and going crazy, okay. Okay, so you melt that a little bit. Careful, it's gonna be hot. And you melt that like that, and that is gonna keep it from fraying out on you and going all kind of crazy, okay? One last rudder check. I'm gonna pull in the cord. Beaver tail comes up. Good to go. Pull forward, out of the teeth. Let it go down, perfect. Okay, now we're gonna check our rudder steering. 
can't see the rudder. However, tell you what we can do. Pull this up. So now we're going to check the actuation, okay? We've got our steering here. If you look back there, I've got the beaver tail lifted so you can actually see it from here. And we're going to raise it this, you know, there we go, one way direction and the other direction. Nice. Okay, so this next part we're going to go over here about sealing stuff up on this kayak or any kayak is um, underneath the back end, the skid plate. Okay, uh, if you have a skid plate on your kayak, and I don't care if it's even a wheel on the keel or anything like that, uh, if there's screws involved or something like that, you need to pull it off and you need to seal it. Okay, that there's no sense in you know, oh, they should have done it from the factory. Well, maybe so, but the question is your peace of mind and your safety, security, and, you know, you're out there to have a good time. So an ounce of prevention again, uh, you know, you don't buy a new car without going through it and checking it out, right? So why do it here? So here's what we're doing. So on, underneath the kayak, you have one of these, okay? This is a skid plate, and this particular one uh, I think it might fit the new V2 105 and 120, the 103, and uh, the 108. I think they've kind of changed over to this, but um, use your own judgment on that. It doesn't matter. This is, uh, this is for display purposes, okay? So uh, what we're doing here is we're going to pull this plate off. You'll see that it has two screw holes in it, okay? And we're gonna pull this plate off and we're gonna seal those holes really well. You'll notice one is slotted to give you a little bit of play room for that other screw. So put, you're gonna start off with the non-slotted one when you put it back in and then move on to the slotted one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put silicone around the screws, the screw holes that are up in there. And then I'm probably going to put a bead line around that center track where the screws are, because I can. Why not? Peace of mind. And uh, then I'll reinstall it. And uh, I may even put uh, a little dab of silicone on the screw heads uh, as I put them back in there. Because I really, really want this sealed. If there's one point to be um, really critical of when it comes to sealing one of these kayaks, this is it. This is the bullet. Uh, countless people have uh, have had issues with all kinds of kayaks with the skid plates end up being the source of the problem. I mean, you could have a cracked kayak or something like that. I get it. Uh, but uh, this is usually the problem. This one or uh, the floor, plan, floor pan screws is another big one. I don't know that that would be an issue on this particular model because, you know, the holes that I looked at on this one were dead-ended. Uh, so they don't go right into the body. So it used to be where... You know, you're, you had these little rubber plug things that went into the top layer of the kayak body, and then your screws went into that, like on the one of my V1 105. And as you hit more fish in or whatever, bringing paddle water in, whatever, and it would leak through those holes and get into the hull, which is, you know, why you seal the floor pan. I'm not sure that's a problem on this one, though. I think they might have addressed that. Uh, but either way, I sealed everything up anyway. Why? Because I can <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take this skid plate off and um, get it all sealed up, and then we'll move on to the next thing. One of the other things we're going to be doing is we're going to take a Phillips screwdriver and some marine silicone, and I'm going to go through the, through the kayak and remove all the screws in the deck plate, which is a well-known leak point uh, for pretty much any kayak, but... Uh, so you pull these screws out, pull out the deck plate, dab in some silicone to the holes, and remount everything. Should be good to go there. And we don't want to forget to do our rails, because we're trying to seal this thing up. I'm debating on doing these. I don't know that I need to for the front hatch, because it has this rubber gasket, so I don't know how critical that'll be, or this up here for the pedal drive. Um, mainly because it's up so darn high, I don't think that's really going to be a factor. But uh, we want to do that. Any any screw mounts like that. Uh, I'll probably do these for the rear uh, holders. Um, might just do these two. But most importantly, underneath here, 
this guy right here. We want to take this off. I'm going to seal this up really good and get that put back on because that's a known leak point and it's underwater all the time. I don't know where this one drafts at, but it doesn't matter. That's going to be underwater. That is a well-known point where water gets in on a lot of people's kayaks and we're going to fix that. Okay, so I'm up underneath the kayak. I just took the skid plate off. You'll notice there's brass inserts in there. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get some silicone into those brass inserts and all around it. And uh, then I will also uh, put some on the bottom of the skid plate and then reattach. Please make sure you do this. Okay, when you're done, you should have it looking like that. Uh, again, you... Uh, the one with this with just a regular round hole start with that one just get the screw started and then put the one in the oblong hole in and get it started then uh, i would say start the you know go ahead and just tighten them up evenly and you should be good to go and um, uh, you can see the silicone that uh, i put up in there just kind of around the head of the screw and stuff just to hold it in there and uh, you should be good to go you don't need to put any around the edges because as you saw underneath there uh, their brass inserts now normally I would recommend uh, putting Loctite metal to metal Loctite but in this case I would say don't do that on this particular case because those brass inserts if you ever need to replace this skid plate uh, then if you Loctite it you could risk spinning that brass insert inside the hull and then you got to rip it out and you end up having to glue it in it's just a big pain so to avoid that possibility, just use the silicone itself and snugging it up. But don't get crazy because you don't want to spin those brass inserts. Kind of rule of thumb with these things. Don't get crazy. We're dealing with, uh, you know, good solid plastic, but we're still dealing with plastic. So, got that part in. On to the next. Okay, so now, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the factory seat that's in the Three Waters Big Fish 103 pedal drive. We're going to take the factory seat out and we're going to put in the 360 seat that has the uh, optional add on uh, lumbar support. And we're going to put that in here. Let's find out uh, how easy or hard that is. So, the first thing we're going to do is your center lock strap for pedaling. You just undo that, take that out, set that aside. This seat's crazy light. Slide it up, bring the front up, pull it up, and out it goes. That's that. Set that aside. I might just use that for pictures. And here is the 360 seat. I did a video on that. So looks like you just take and put this in like this. Guide it on back, put the front in. And there it is. That's in. Now this sits a little bit higher, obviously, a couple inches higher, you can see, so you have a little more room under here. And you can still run your strap under here like this, if you choose to. And you just go like that. It goes on the bottom bar. See on the other one, it goes through the seat. This one goes through here, just like that. And then if you want, in this case, you just unlock it that and you can swivel it around any way you want you'll notice it, it's good to go and then if you want to lock it in anywhere you just rotate off the cam like uh, I did a video that uh, the assembly of this the assembly of this uh, chair I did a video on that you can go watch that video if you want and um, so you can lock this in anywhere you want pull it out and uh, I can access my camera and here you'll notice the Lumbar support, you can raise and lower, and increase or decrease your tension on your lumbar. So I have not yet tried that to see where I like it yet. And uh, then it's got a metal plate right down here, like I showed in that other prior video. But that's how to install this into your Big Fish 103, 108. I like the height. I really like that. I think that's going to be pretty beneficial. We all like to get up a little bit higher. I will say the factory seat's pretty darn nice though. It's it, it seems shaped different and it is wider than my 105. So um, 
I think I got some cushy times ahead. All right, on to the next part. Okay, there's the ProFish drive. Uh, as you open it up out of the box, you'll have the drive unit, <coughs> some instruction manuals, and I'm guessing these are probably the pedals, could be the crank arms, whatever. So I'm going to get all this out of the box and have a look-see. Let's get that put on that. Okay, so we got the ProFish drive out of the box and a couple things uh, they got the instruction manual if you have any questions um, they've got a good good instruction manual it goes step by step tells you everything you need to know if you're unfamiliar with this or you just feel insecure and uh, again you know if you have any questions about this kind of stuff you know feel free to drop me a, a you know a question in the comment section uh, i do my best to get uh, back with everybody in the kit also came with the correct size allen wrench which goes to your fits your uh, pedals it also fits these over here um, so that's nice keep that on board it comes with the crank cups these will go inside of this okay like that so you see the square hole right there that go the lines with these square holes over here okay and uh, so you take this bolt out and uh, then you put this in here like that lock that on 90 you know 180 degrees opposing each other don't forget that if you did you'd remember real quick okay and uh so then you take your bolt and you put this lock washer on it slip it through this in there and on and we're going to use loctite you know it now i want to point out something else that they've done they've upgraded their uh their pedal system here uh there were some people that had some issues with the uh, out on the water this was backing out and they didn't have a wrench and uh so it was backing out now what they've done now is they put a set screw and you can see it's even loctited so it's tightened down and loctited at the factory which is good i like that you know that's that's them listening to the customers the other thing i'm probably going to do is i'm going to you know drop a little bit of a really nice oil down in here and give her a spin do it now while it's off nice and easy so let me take care of that and we'll be right back so we're good to go got oil on these and they're spinning nice and free now uh, you'll notice there is a right and a left right there marked accordingly okay that would be right and left according to you as the paddler the other thing i like to make note of um, on here these uh bolts right here they're reverse thread on uh, one side so this is normal thread on the right and this one over here is reverse thread. So the left-hand side is reverse thread. Okay, they've been doing that on bicycles forever. So if you know much about bikes, it's kind of a no-brainer. But uh, if you didn't know that, that can be really frustrating. Okay, so we're going to take this bolt out right here. And I'm going to take a rag. I'm going to wipe off any schmeg, a little bit of schmeg on there. Schmeg, that's a word. Okay, I'm going to clean that off. I want a nice clean mated surface here. Okay. And then I'm going to take a little bit of Loctite. So we're going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on here. I said a little bit. Let's not get carried away here. Roll that around the threads. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay. Going to put the right crank on the right side. If you're wondering which one it is, you just look at the. Uh, let me turn the camera a little bit here. You look at this right here, face this this uh, prop alignment. This is a prop alignment, so that needs to be facing you. So this will go on the right side, and it doesn't really matter which way you put this on to start with. Just kind of pick one. Okay. Kind of wiggle that on there a little bit. Like that. And we'll see if we can get it started here, if I have it on there far enough. All right. So we're going to drop the ProFish drive down in there. Like that. Fits down in there. Screw that down in there. 
Make sure these are all tight. They're locking in place. And now it's solid as a rock part of the kayak. Remember the left side is reverse thread. I'm gonna clean this off, put some Loctite on it, get that other side installed, and we'll be ready to roll. Um, I would definitely say keep the zone wrench on board because as these get seated in, uh, these were, these are going to get seated in. So do not leave this at home. Uh, pedal out there for a while and uh, check them because they're going to get a little bit loose until they get seated. And once they get seated, you're good to go. Don't even worry about it after that. Okay? Okay, I know the uh, instruction manual also mentions this as well, but if you're pedaling and you start to experience some skipping, you know, Starts giving you a little beef. Now it's moving around because I don't have it tightened in or locked in or anything. But um, so this, as it says in the instruction manual, this screw right here on the front of the, the front of the drive. Okay. So that's a lock nut. So you just break loose that lock nut, and you will tighten that in just a little bit. Don't go crazy with it, but you'll tighten that in a little bit and then lock this back down. Now there's another one too on your blue lock lever over here this one if this is not adequately locking it in correctly okay like this one it's got just a tiny little bit of play in it and that's probably okay you don't want to look a lot of undue pressure but if that starts to get a little bit loose come over to this side and you'll notice right here is the opposing screw so what you would do is you loosen the other side and that releases the tension on this block okay and you can tighten that up just a little bit at a time. Tighten it up just a little bit at a time until that locks down a little, you know, nice and firm. Okay? I think we just about got this thing put together. Um, it's looking pretty good. Anyway. Okay, so for initial assembly and stuff like that, uh, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I've got it, uh, all the screws sealed up. I've got the Profish drive installed, got the 360 seat installed, um, rudders installed and adjusted, eight balls done. I did change one thing on eight ball. I sure did, just because it drove me nuts. Okay, so right here, the eight, on this case, was upside down, so the small end was down. Okay, yeah, okay, I'm a car guy. Come on, cut me some slack. So when I sit in it, I want the eight to be looking right, just like it was in my car in high school. So, just saying. So, I turned that around. I just took these two screws right here, took them out, spun it around, put them back in, and now I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, 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 picky, picky, picky. Anyway, so, uh, man, once again, to uh, Feel Free, Joe at Feel Free, uh, for hooking me up with uh, this amazing craft that i really hope uh gets my channel uh even more effective with more video that i'm not losing so much footage like i was before the editing room was full of digital clippings on the floor uh, so hopefully this will help me capture smoother more consistent and um, not with so much loss uh, it takes a lot of work to get that underwater video and uh, at the end of the day, I really want smooth glass video as much as possible. It's difficult enough as it is. So um, I think from here out, uh, it's just a matter of trying to figure out how I want to mount camera gear, where I want to put what. Um, and I got to get it out and test it. And uh, if it passes the test, then it's on to Clear Lake. I mean, where else am I going to go? for this thing's maiden real real voyage, spend a day on the water. So let's see how this goes. Amber Dog Productions. Thanks, Joe. See ya.